So the question is really, what is European bonsai versus Japanese bonsai? I wonder whether one can ask the question like this. Well, first of all, we all know that somehow in China bonsai developed and then was taken by the Japanese who built their, their art. And now in all around the world, uh, we are more or less have doing Japanese bonsai. Okay, so you cannot really divide that. I mean, I am still doing Japanese bonsai. But of course, it's starting to look a bit different. And the same again, uh, there is no such thing as Japanese bonsai, period. There is many Japanese bonsai artists who have different ways of expressing themselves and also in history. If you see bonsai books from 1920s, you will be surprised what trees look like. Very much like mine, by the way. Very natural, wild trees. Some look outright silly nowadays and some are splendid, very naturalistic. Okay, and then uh, the book came the war, which was a very dark period in Japan also. And after the war, then what uh, we now call traditional uh, Japanese bonsai, that only evolved then. And, that the, and then there are more and more refined trees, and, and these are the trees that we think are the traditional bonsai which have been there for centuries. No, that's not really true. Uh, and then we find them more and more. And that's it. It's normal for an art form to progress. Somebody finds that if you make a, a branch uh, tidier, it looks better. So the next one says, "Oh, if it looks better, you make it even more tidy, and it still looks better." So and then and the next one says, "Oh, he was so successful in tidying this up. I have to do more of that." And like everything in life, you can't do too much of a good thing. If you're tidying up. Too much, at one point, it will look artificial. Now, you can get used to that. You still think it's beautiful because you, your eye got used to that. And, 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 and the, the bonsai art is going away from nature more and more. And all of a sudden, it is very abstract, very artificial. And that's the state we are at the moment. And then came, uh, in, came a man uh, who called Kimura, who caused a revolution with hindsight. Uh, he, uh, what was before was a Zen Buddhist sort of art, quiet, peaceful, you want to admire, holding itself back, less is more, wabi-sabi and all that stuff. All of a sudden he turned exactly to the opposite. It's now an extrovert art. Uh, you, have, you want to show off uh, more is better, okay, the tree must have a little dead wood, no, it must have more dead wood, the dead wood must make a spiral and triple somersault and not, and there cannot be enough dead wood on a tree, just like a man cannot have enough muscles. Well, of course he can, there's, there's always a, a point of no return where you're exaggerating this. Now, and of course, uh, all these that copy Kimura and Kimura himself, uh, did exaggerate uh, and then the Italians are exaggerating and, and, and everyone exaggerates more and at one point it becomes just almost grotesque. There's just too much dead wood and it's too wild. Okay, and then the crowns are, are being neatly designed and then the, all of a sudden the whole thing looks as if it were of plastic, like a, a Russian dish table decoration, I called it. Of course that's all insulting and bad. And of course I'm painting black and white, but this is the development that I saw. And I, from my early starts uh, coming from the mountains and growing up in the mountains and collecting trees in the mountains, nobody telling me how to style them, I, I, I started finding out that if you style them like the real trees, you, you're in a better position than to try to make this look like a bonsai. Okay, and anyway, uh, I, uh, this over refinement doesn't, did not not appeal to me so much, and I was not the only one, but I was more probably one of the first one to, to declare this openly. I have no guilt feelings about that anymore, and I read about this famous statement of John Acker, which goes along the lines, uh, don't try to make your, your tree look like a bonsai, make your bonsai look like a tree. And I took that literally, okay, it's, it's as simple as that. I tried to make my bonsai look like a tree, and and the, and the result was that what that my trees uh, looked like very untidy. They looked very bad, and I learned that to make them look better, 
because I learned it is not good to just copy nature. You have to copy the feeling of nature, okay? And you and it's good to copy some detail, but not every detail, because then it would look just untidy. Well, anyway, uh, so I developed my own way of doing this, only to find out that again I'm not the only one. There are some others in the world who, who did that in parallel in in America. Uh, Dan Robinson, Nick Lenz did a bit of that, and then I found that. Uh, in the old books that some Japanese trees look very much like, like what I'm trying to do. And then all of a sudden I find, oh, Penjing, Chinese bonsai, some of them look very much like that. But, but again, I am now in a development pers personally and people were questioning what I was doing because I was moving away from what they called traditional bonsai. And they, and they thought this is wrong. And uh, so I was in the defensive. They were always offending me, like you're doing something wrong. And I learned how to defend myself. And since I was offended so often, I learned how to very well defend myself. <laughs> so, so all of a sudden I was the Pope of naturalistic bonsai style. Some people thought I had even invented that. Not really, you cannot invent nature. Nature has invented that. And so I'm just doing something which somehow was always done, but I, but I gave it a name. Okay, so, so basically you start out with the question, can you tell me the difference between Japanese bonds or European bonds and your own style? Well, it's all, it's not, that's not basically the difference. There, you would be very much surprised that quite a lot of Japanese masters who have seen my trees and spoken to me about what I'm thinking totally agree with me. Like, yes, that's what you do and you can do. You're allowed to do that. Okay, it's only that in the West we think you must be more Japanese than the Japanese and you must adhere to the rules. What rules? The rules that are written down in two books. One was by John Ak and the other by Yuji Yoshimura. And these are the rules that, we, that most people still think are written in stone. The Japanese said, yeah, well, yeah, so I mean, yeah, you can use them, you cannot use them. Okay, uh, but if you strictly follow these rules, you will come up with something that looks like a bonsai. And then you do it with the next tree and you will find the next tree will just look just like the first one. And then you have a collection of trees that all look alike. We call this cookie cutter, which is a derogative term, it's very insulting. But yes, many people think they're great artists, but really they're just performing a copy of a copy of a copy, which artistically is worthless. And I decided, no, that's not for me. I want to be an artist. I want to, 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 to question tradition. I want to, to move forward. That's what, in my sense, an artist has to do. In the Asian sense, it's just the opposite is true. An artist must first of all listen to the master and do exactly like the master. And if he can copy the master so that the master himself doesn't know who did that, then he's a good artist. In, in the Western uh, art tradition, that's, that, that's totally wrong. He's just a copyist and it's, that would be artistically worthless. So you have to try new things, but not everything that's new is better. Many, many of the new things are just no good. But it's, your, it's my duty, as, a, as a, the duty of every Western artist, to at least try. Of course, you get blamed by the traditionalists who think that it's your duty to follow tradition. I say, what tradition? It's not my tradition. I'm not Japanese. Oh, and you know, I come from Austria, Germany. A, a, a traditionalist is a Nazi. We, we, we don't respect our own tradition. Why should I re respect somebody else's tradition? Okay, so, so well, my frame of mind makes it very easy for me to just ignore all this. And, and I do understand that this offends some people because they think they're doing a Asian, a Japanese art form and I'm really offending the Japanese. Now, I also for quite a while thought that, yeah, the Japanese probably don't like what I'm doing. And then I speak to very, very important Japanese masters and they encourage me to continue. One of them over a glass of music, don't you copy the Japanese like all of them do. Even if you succeed in copying us so that, that we can't, cannot even tell anymore this, this was a Japanese doing this or a Western person, so what? Okay, it's like, like I'm Tyrolean, okay? Uh, we had this Japanese person who, who did learn how to yodel, okay? And at one point he could yodel just like a Tyrolean. Now he was shown because that was very interesting that a Japanese person would yodel like we do. But so what? I mean, uh, uh, I mean that's just a curiosity. So, so I think uh, it is much wiser uh, to, to, to try to go find your own way. 
and they applaud that. It's only that some so-called traditionalists, which I actually call fundamentalists, think you have to strictly follow their the Japanese way. And as I said before, there is no the Japanese way. There's so many. It's only that we ha we happen to have learned a certain spectrum. And we two books mainly influenced us. Now these books were written in, in uh, were written in the 1960s, 70s. So they're 40, 50 years old, and and they really report the status quo of bonsai in Japan at that time. And this is what we are copying. Okay. Well, well, there's nothing wrong with that with the retro as long as you know that you're doing the retro. But many people think they're avant-garde, they're they're cutting-edge bonsai, and really they're just doing something which is basically old-fashioned. Okay, so as it goes in art, there's always progress, and as I said before, the, the newer is not better, it's just new. And, and, and there is a fashion trend going on, I've changed my, my taste over the past 30 years several times, and I, and I can see that other people are doing that, and, and I wonder whether in 50 years we will still do what we're doing. It cannot possibly be, we will do something else. Okay, did that answer your simple question? I don't think so. <laughs>